Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video. As you saw by the title, girl, we're reading Air of Fire, Air of Fire. It's been a long time coming. I think I've started this vlog maybe at least two or three times at this point. So I finished the book that I was reading yesterday. I was coming home from the gym. I'm wearing a green tank top and I'm just like, it is time. We are gonna read Air of Fire. I am so in the mood for this right now. I literally cannot wait. I feel like I just need to know what's gonna happen. We are embarking on an entirely new journey at this point. First of all, if you are new to this series and you haven't watched the other two videos in the series, I'm gonna leave a link to like the playlist or at least one of the videos right here where you can go check those out. This is like my favorite video series that I am creating at the moment. I absolutely love these books. I am going through an absolute time in my life with Sarah J Mass right now. And I'm so freaking excited for this book. I feel like I took a break from after reading Crown of Midnight just to kind of like, I don't know, explore other reading tastes and whatever else I was feeling at the moment. But I need to come back. I need to come back here. I'm so pumped. Also, if this is the first time you are joining me, welcome to my channel. Hi, my name's Kara. But if you have watched a few of my videos at this point and have not subscribed, I would absolutely love it if you would hit the subscribe do button down below. Thank you for being here. Let's get into this book. I am so thrilled to be reading this. Also, this video is going to be all spoilers. So if you haven't read Air of Fire, maybe read it and then come back. But this is a book that's been out for a while. So I feel like a lot of people, you know, have read it and like, I'm going to just talk about spoilers the whole time. Okay, so yeah. Where do we leave off with Crown of Midnight? All I remember is she's going across the sea to where the Fae are and we have discovered she is Fae and she is Aelin Galathinius and she is still very messy between Kale and Dorian. We don't know what's going on there. And now she's leaving and that's, that's what I can remember from The Crown of Midnight. I still can tell you after sitting on those books for like two months at this point, still not a Kale stan. I always go back to Dorian, he's my bae. I don't know what we're gonna get in this book. I don't know if we're gonna get another love interest, which I kind of feel like we will because she's gonna be separated from both Dorian and Kale. And I feel like there's bound to be someone else coming in who's just gonna like steal her heart away, steal my heart away, and we're gonna live happily ever after. Okay, so I'm gonna be, be starting it tonight and I will be giving you like little updates, very similar to my previous vlogs. Oh, we're back, baby, we're back. Hello, okay, um, I am on chapter 10, which is about 70 pages in. I've kind of been listening to it and then I've been like really into my Nintendo Switch lately. I've been playing Stardew Valley, which is bomb and it's such a great game to like listen to an audiobook too because it's just like mindless stuff. So I've been, that's what I've been doing tonight. It's been so nice. Um, there are so many things that I forgot that happened in Crown of Midnight. Like, I forgot the betrayal that happened when Selena like, destroyed Kale and like, scarred his face. I forgot about like, the Maeve thing, about how she's like, Selena's aunt, and she's like, the key to unlocking Eelway. I also forgot about Eelway, I forgot about the word keys. Like, there's so much stuff that I forgot about. I forgot about Nehemia dying, like, how did I forget that? Spoiler, if you haven't read the second one. Yeah, th there were so many things I forgot, which is great because I feel like she's doing a great job reintroducing those things if you did take a break from the last book. But we've had some introduction of some new characters. Okay, there's Rowan and then there's the um, Adian. Yes, Adian to me is Daenerys's brother 
in the beginning of Game of Thrones. That is the exact image I have. She's related to one, I think she's related to Rowan, like actually related to him because I think that that's like her cousin or something like that. He is broody, like rude. He needs to just get his act together. He's been very, very mean to our girl and we hate that. He's like the prince or something like that. I don't know what the storyline there is gonna be. I don't know if he's gonna be a main character. I kind of feeling like he is but I kind of hate him right now, so. Yeah, basically he's like, he is Selena's guardian. He is like, I think trying to watch over her to like make sure she does the duty she's supposed to be doing while she's over there. Something along those lines, I don't know. I'm still like very new, to, like very new to the plot. We've met Maeve who is Selena's aunt who has like all of the answers about Ilwe and all that kind of stuff. And she very much reminds me of Amarantha from Court of Thorns and Roses. Like she's like kind of rude and snarky and evil. That's where we're at. To be honest with you, I am literally loving this. Like just being back in this world, it is so great. I have missed it so much. And I'm just so excited to keep reading. I like literally am so happy that I am finally reading this book. I think this is gonna be a great book. I actually kind of love that she is separated from Dorian and Kale at the moment. Like, I don't know. I think it creates a lot of tension. <laughs> All right, I'll give you guys an update later. Bye. Hi, welcome back to an update. I'm like 150 pages in, 170. And I want to give some high level thoughts. I just got home from work, as you can see. I don't bother changing, um, cause I'm gonna go to the gym right after this and listen to more of this book. Also haven't seen the light of day. Don't you just love this time of year? I have some confused thoughts. I wrote a little post-it note to help remind myself. So number one, who are these witches? And what do they want? I am confused. We know Baba Yellowlegs died from Crown of Midnight. I didn't think it was as a significant an event as it has now played out to be. Clearly that event has like propelled all these other events going on with like all these witches that we didn't even know were hiding or something like that. So basically there's this clan. You have the yellow bloods and like the blue bloods or something like that. I honestly can't remember. There is a witch named Manon and she is out for blood, literally. To be honest, all of her chapters, I'm just really confused. I feel like at this point we have gotten so many new characters added that my brain is like just come jumbled with all of the storyline going on here and it is getting kind of confusing. I'm finding I'm having to like re-listen to different parts of it multiple times to try and like remember and catch up and keep on the right path of what is actually happening. But okay, back to these witches. Don't know what the end game is here. I don't know who they are siding with, if they are siding with the King of Otterlin or if they're siding with themselves or if they're siding with Selena. I don't understand what's going on. If I remember correctly, Selena killed the witch. So I'm guessing they're not siding with her. I don't even know. I'm just confused in terms of that kind of situation. Also, do you like the Christmas tree? I don't know, I was kind of in the mood to set it up yesterday and it's helping with the seasonal depression. So I enjoy it. And also it's just like, just a fun little cozy <laughs> background, right? Okay, number two, Dorian Bay. He is the one and only for me. I love Dorian. I think Dorian over Kale every single time, but now Dorian has, I don't know if she's potentially a new love interest, but like she has the hots for him for sure. There's this healer named Sorsha and she is like super sweet, super cute, has had a crush on Dorian since she was like two. She wants him. And Dorian I feel like is like a little bit flirty back because he keeps getting hurt all the time and has to go see this healer to like heal his wounds. Yeah, so that's going on there. I would be really sad if Dorian ended up being with this Sorsha. I mean, like, at the end of the day, I want Dorian and Selena to be together forever. But if that's the way it has to be, Sorsha, I guess you're just, you're great. Okay, now moving on. We have Kale. Kale's storyline is matched up with Adian. And Adian is, I think, Selena's cousin, if I can remember correctly. And at first, Adian, just like I said earlier, very much gives me Daenerys Targaryen's brother vibes. I don't remember his name at all, but like he was giving me really creepy, just weird vibes at first. Now we're getting a little bit more into his head and it seems like he very much wants Aelin to be back on the throne and he's like super surprised that she's still alive and like loyal to her, which is great. And I like, like that side of him, but also I feel like he's really shady 
and he is now captured Kale. He's trying to like get Kale to say what's happened to Selena and all this kind of stuff. And he's like real pissed that Kale sent Selena to Wendlin and Kale's trying to defend himself. I don't know. I just like don't like Kale. I'm annoyed with Kale always. But Kale's trying to do some like backhand mission to subvert the King of Otterlin and try and he's like doing his own thing and he has his own agenda. And then last line last storyline we have is selena and rowan rowan is this like distant cousin of selena's who is trying to teach her to be like fey and like trying to teach her how to like switch into her feyness and he sucks i also don't like him i am getting the absolutely i love this vibes because I'm reading this series again and I just like absolutely love this series, but I'm really confused right now. It is just muddling my thoughts, muddling my head, and I can't follow what's happening. <laughs> I guess I'll give you an update later when I actually figure out what the plot is, but I just, long story short, I love this series. I'm so happy to be back in this world. Like, honestly, when I finish this, I just wanna go on to Queen of Shadows right away because I just love this so much. I guess I'll give you guys an update later. I'm gonna go to the gym and then listen to it and hopefully get a little bit farther. Peace. everyone um update honestly have not read a lot since the last check and i've probably read like 60 pages because the eras tour went on sale and we all know what a fucking disaster <laughs> this week has been i don't want to talk about it but it has consumed all of my thoughts <laughs> okay so i have not been in the mood to read for the last few days just moving on from that so i'm probably on like page i don't even know i'm around page 200. essentially i also have realized i enjoy reading at the gym which might be kind of strange like i feel like no one reads at the gym <laughs> But I found a new enjoyment for going to the gym, walking on the treadmill for like 40 minutes and just reading my book. It's like honestly really nice. Adian. Now we realize Adian is actually loyal to Selena. Like that's her cousin and apparently he like stands the shit out of her and like wants her to be queen. Giving kind of creepy vibes to be honest with you, but I guess I'm okay with it. I'm not really sure. Rowan, I don't know if this is just like a side effect of watching House of the Dragon earlier. <laughs> okay, they're like distantly related cousins. And now I'm like, why am I feeling like they are gonna have some kind of romantic chemistry? I really don't think Sarah J Mass would put an incestual relationship in here, but I think I've just been <laughs> tainted from watching House of the Dragon. So now I'm like, oh, I could reasonably see them having a relationship. No, that's absolutely not gonna happen. <laughs> Rowan, I'm coming around to. He seems like he's actually a kind of a good person, like maybe a little bit on the inside. He seems to be like quite, not like protective of Selena, but like maybe a little bit. And also he's like doing nice things for her. And I'm like, am I supposed to like you? I don't really know. I know he is sided with Queen Maeve. So jury's still out for Rowan. Dorian is going to get with this, this healer for sure. There's no question about it. He keeps sneaking down to go see her in the middle of the night and get his wounds healed. I think the ship has sailed maybe a little bit for Dorian and Selena, which is breaks my heart. I think he still has some feelings for Selena, but like, I don't think Selena has feelings for him at all because she just mentioned how she keeps thinking about Kale. I feel like that's all the updates I have at this point. I wanna give my overall like feelings about the book so far. I feel like I'm enjoying it more than I enjoyed the first part of Crown of Midnight. I felt like the first part of Crown of Midnight was really slow. And this one, I feel like I'm pretty much more invested into it. I feel like since the last update, I have come around to the characters and the storylines a bit more, and it's not so confusing as I was in the beginning. So that's good. So yeah, all good things, nothing bad, except the Eras tour and... Like, I got tickets and I, I'm so happy about it, but like, at what cost? At what cost? I'm gonna go read and just make myself 
feel better by reading this book. <laughs> okay, bye. Hi. So I decided to do some reading sprints tonight because it's freezing here and I'm cold and the world is burning. So why not get lost in a fantasy novel? Remember how I was talking about Dorian and Sorsha? Yeah, they just kissed. Like what? I mean, we all saw it coming, didn't we? <sighs> My one true loves are meant to be together. I don't want Dorian to be with anyone else. Ugh. Like, I'm sad because I love Dorian and Selena, but I also like Sorsha too. She's a really sweet human, and I just want Dorian and Selena to be together. I love Dorian. Honestly, I think he's my favorite. <laughs> just out of anyone in this book. Well, I mean, aside from Selena, but like, he's my favorite male character in this book for sure. Um, I'm gonna keep reading to find out what happens, but yeah, that's the latest update. Okay, bye. <laughs> Good morning! So last night I decided to do some reading sprints. It was a good time. Actually, it was a great time. It was literally probably one of my favorite reading sprints I've ever done. It was literally just everyone on the sprint. We all agreed, hey, we're just gonna be cozy tonight, right? Like, we're just gonna have a chill night. It was great. I played my Nintendo Switch, listened to my audiobook. Quite a nice time. My one thought that I'm having this morning, I'm literally just over the 50 percent mark for the book. But am I wrong or am I right? Is Rowan or is Rowan not Selena's distantly related cousin? I genuinely thought that there was a conversation that they are related. Are we getting a House of Dragon style romance here? I did not think that Sarah J Maas would step into the incestual. <laughs> am I wrong? I swear to God that they were related. And if they're not related, now I have this image in my brain that they're related. But the last line of part one was like, and Selena felt an ember burning. And I'm like, okay, that's definitely alluding to romantic feelings. And like, obviously Selena is very well known to fall for her bodyguards as we've seen with Kale. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I, I feel very confused. I'm still 100% team Dorian and Selena, but baby, that's not happening, okay? I, I don't know how this is all gonna play out. Genuinely do not know. Also, um, the witches chapters, where are we going with it? What is the whole point of this? I know it's gonna get explained, but I am now halfway through this book and I'm genuinely like, I'm enjoying the storyline, 
but I have no idea what the point of this storyline is. Absolutely none. Are they on Selena's side? Are they on the King of Otterland's side? Is there gonna be a war between these people? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Back to Adian again. We're coming around to Adian. All right, we're coming around to him. He is, he does seem like he has a genuine kind soul or at, at least he has Selena's best interest at heart. Like I said before, I just picture him as like scum of the earth Daenerys Targaryen brother and I'm having a hard time coming out of that. Also, he's like kind of weirdly obsessed with Selena. Like I understand that that's his queen like or that's the the chosen queen for his land but like sometimes he says things and i'm like that's your cousin <laughs> i don't know what is sarah j mass doing why are we getting all these like kind of para and sexual relationships i feel like game of thrones it very much is understandable why like i at least i can understand it more it's not like oh yeah that makes sense it's just like okay it's an adult fantasy they can kind of play around with the rules a little bit more it's adult content but this is like very targeted new adult content and i feel like the new adult population is not like just jump it on the train of the incestual relationships. So don't know what's gonna, don't know how this is gonna go down. Peace. Hey, I'm giving an update. Honestly, don't know where I'm at. I'm at chapter like 42 or something. I don't know, maybe 60, 70% into it. Okay, let me just explain what happened. Basically, Selena almost died. She was with Rowan and he was like making her use her magic, but then it kind of got out of control. And basically she almost burned herself alive. And then after that, Rowan was like, I'm gonna take care of you and made her so she didn't die, like brought her into the care of like the healers and like took care of her and stuff like that was like extremely protective of her and like trying to like keep her alive and stuff like that. Very much so not like I'm just doing this as a person trying to help another person. It was like a very instinctual protective kind of tone that he was acting and taking throughout the whole thing that he was doing. Okay, I'm not crazy. I just looked it up. They're literally related. Why are we getting incest here? I I can't. Like, I guess I can't Game of Thrones, but I cannot get on board with it. Why is Selena <laughs> allowing this to happen? Like, how is it just automatically no, like we are related. There can be absolutely no attraction with us. I don't get why she is entertaining these thoughts of liking him. And he's clearly really protective of her as well, but they're related. <laughs> I can't get on board with this. Why can't we just go back to good old Kale and Selena or Dorian and Selena? Why, why is she entertaining this thought? Like the thing is, is if Sarah J Mass just left out the part that they were related, what if they, if Rowan and her were not related, I would be all on board with this romance, but you're literally related. I can't get over it. I can't get over it. Honestly, I really like Rowan as a character, like very much so. I think he's really broody and mysterious and just like kind of a fun character to read about and follow. And I like him and Selena's dynamic. I just cannot deal with this related thing. Next thing I wanted to mention, Dorian's a lost cause. He's in love with Sorsha. I don't feel like there's much coming back from it, but I love Sorsha. So I guess I'm not mad about that. I just want Dorian to be happy to be honest with you, but now I don't like any of Selena's options. I had so much hope when I started this book that she was gonna be able to find someone like totally different and totally blow my mind, but she found her cousin. Did anyone else feel this way while you were reading this book? I... <laughs> I feel disappointed, honestly, because I was like, the first two, I was so just absolutely loving the storyline. And I feel like I do like the, the storyline in here, but I'm not as latched on to it as I felt like I was with the first two. And maybe things are gonna speed up because I feel like I'm at the 70% mark and it's gonna get, you know, quicker from here with the plot, but real strange dynamics we got going on here. I'm definitely gonna finish the series. There's no doubt about it. I'm just like, I swear to God, if they end up being mates, I I will not be able to handle that, okay? I read this whole series for her to marry her cousin. I do like Adian as well. He is really growing on me. I think he's just like, he's just kind of like a little douchebag and who just wants to protect Selena at all costs. And I appreciate that, um, but I like his little snarky 
annoying behavior sometimes. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna keep reading. Please tell me it gets better. Please tell me that the fact that they're related is a possible lie or are they too distantly related that it's okay? If I found out I was related to someone I was interested in, automatic no, automatic. It only works in Game of Thrones, okay? <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Um, here to give an update on Arafire. A few things. I have officially confirmed Rowan and Selena are distantly, distantly, distantly related. It took me a few days to come to terms with this. It's not been an easy journey for my brain to go through. I debated giving up because I was very frustrated. <laughs> but today I feel like I've come to the point where I've accepted it and I'm embracing it. And it's a lot better journey from here, to be honest with you. I think that Rowan is my favorite. I have fully accepted Dorian and Selena are not going to be a thing. Like, Dorian's in love with Sorsha. We all knew it wasn't going to happen from the beginning. I had a bunch of false hope. Kale, on the other hand, I just do not. That is toxic. That is the toxicest toxic of toxicity that could be happening for her. I do not approve of Kale but we approve of Rowan. He is the broody, mysterious bodyguard, and I <laughs> love it. So that's where I'm at. Basically, nothing really much has happened because I haven't read much this week because my mental health has been on the decline, and it's put me into a major reading slump, and I can't really get over it, so <laughs> here we are. Um, no, I'm still, I'm probably like two thirds of the way through at this point. And the last clip got cut off because my phone died. Great. I have no battery on my phone and it's terrible. Continuing to read chapter 43 and things are happening. Kale who? Dorian who? Rowan? That's, that's all that, that there is right now. And basically they're just laying in this bed together and now they're like touching each other's hair and it's over there's there's no question about what's gonna happen it's over it's done i'm okay with it i'm accepting it oh my god i can't wait to see what kale's gonna say <laughs> cannot wait he sucks man go find someone else we we can't we no not, don't go find someone else go to therapy to deal with your toxic masculinity because i cannot handle it all right it's thanksgiving just wanted to give that update and i'm gonna put my makeup on and continue listening okay bye also just want to say happy thanksgiving very 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 thankful for all of you watching you have no idea how much i appreciate it i cannot believe my channel has made it this far since i started it earlier this year so i just want to say quick thank you to everyone who is watching and everyone who has subscribed and everyone who has supported me i love you guys thank you so much One quick update last update of the day because we're heading to my family thanksgiving right after this let me just update you on the plot a little bit selena and rowan basically just encountered they like found soldiers from wendlin coming into or not wendlin um otterlin coming into wendlin to like set these creatures off to capture demi or something like that honestly 
I'm kind of confused on the plot. I think it's because the King of Otterlin is trying to take over Wendlin or destroy magic or like something along those lines. Can't tell you why I'm confused about it, but basically bad guys are coming in. And basically Rowan and Selena got into this like fight with these, they're not fae, they're like magic disgusting creatures that look like humans. It's gross. They like basically fought off these demons. The whole battle though, yeah, you have the warrior stuff going on, but man, Rowan and Selena's chemistry is piping hot. It is spicy. It is there. This is the best chemistry Selena has had with any male character so far. Chef's kiss, way to go. Like their chemistry is insane and they're totally denying it. It's a total enemies to lovers thing and I'm literally living for it. They're the end all be our, they are for sure mates. There's no question about it. Selena's already questioning her connection with Kale because like basically she destroyed Kale in the last book and she was like well if he was my mate I wouldn't have been able to do that and Rowan is like yeah because I think Rowan already knows that they're mates also god I know this is part of the Sarah J Mass world of like finding your mate and it's like a big deal but I hate the word mate it was way overused in A Court of Thorns and Roses like series and now it's just ruined for me which kind of sucks because I really like the chemistry between Rowan and Selena and like can we just come up with a different word or something or just like not say mate that often? Also, can we not say heartbeat that often? Regardless, it's fine. I'm over it. It's okay. I am here for the Selena and Rowan mate match. If And I also think they're like carry on or like the magical connection thing with their magic is connected. I think that there is something there, but that's for sure happening. Okay, we're gonna head to Thanksgiving gonna be a great day we have a lot of food planned to eat it's i'm so excited i'm also starving because i've barely eaten anything today and i just can't wait to eat all of the good food okay bye people. I am page 470, chapter 55. A lot of shit has just happened and I feel like I have to talk about it because I feel like it's been very, very significant. So basically this big battle just happened. The King of Otterlin has killed all of the slaves in the war camps in Irelia. He killed like all of the slaves in Calicula. He killed the slaves in um, Endovier. He did that. He just, that was wrong because of like, they had caused an uprising after the death of Nehemia. So he just decided that's done. We're having no more uprisings and he killed everyone, which was horrible. And now on top of that, the King of Otterlin has sent three creatures to Wendelin. They were destroying Demifei and they're basically trying to like start a war in Wendelin or something along those lines. And Selena and Rowan and their whole crew are trying to not let this war like happen in Wendelin. It's like Selena and the good guys and Rowan versus these three creatures and this other bad guy named Narak. And Selena's like, I'm gonna like fight off everyone. You guys stay in the castle and I'm gonna like go fight these three bad guys. So she went to go fight them and 
did not make it. Like, not that she died, but like <laughs> these three creatures are like coming into her mind and making her remember all of like the most traumatic memories of her life, like remembering the death of her parents. So we're learning about how Selena actually got to where she is, like pre uh, Arabin, like finding her in the river and stuff. Real traumatic stuff. It's really sad, like everything I just read about how like the King of Otterland came and then basically discovered that Selena had magic and was like using magic on her and then killed her parents that night. And then Selena like went into their bed because she was scared and didn't realize they were dead. And she like crawled into their bed when they were dead, traumatizing. And then the nursemaid saving her, like it's a whole thing. Basically now she like remembered that memory. These creatures are still trying to like get into her mind. It's like a big psychological thing that's going on right now. I'm very intrigued. I have less than hundred pages left. So it's to the point of the book where you're like, Let's go, let's get this book done. I'm so excited about it. But I feel like I've really struggled to follow the plot this whole time in the book. And now it's catching up with me because I'm just confused a little bit as to what's happening. I mean, like I get the overarching thing, like the King of Otterland's essentially trying to like destroy everyone and all magic. And he wants to be the one with all of the power. He is like the evilest person, like the evilest character I think I've read in a really long time. Like he's just like, innately evil. I don't know, maybe more like adult books. You see like layers to an evil character. This guy's just straight up evil. And there's no at all redeeming qualities about this person, which I kind of like don't love. It It feels like a little bit, yeah, like fairy tale, like juvenile to me. I, I appreciate when characters are more, not just one dimensional, you know, and King of Otterland seems very one dimensional to me, but yeah. Basically, story is heating up right now. I honestly think I'm gonna give this book a four star. I think this has been my least favorite one out of the series that I've read so far, not including The Assassin's Blade. It's just been really hard to follow for me. I'm not as hooked as I was in the first two. I'm interested to see what's gonna happen at the end of the story, and I'm really hoping it's gonna be a good setup for Queen of Shadows, because I heard that one is amazing. Let's keep reading. I'm interested to see what's gonna happen. Let's do it. Good morning, I look. So cute. Okay, so I didn't finish the book last night and I'm sure a lot of people would be like, how could you not finish the book when it was starting to get really good? Yeah, I just didn't, okay? I was like, I had been reading for like two hours and I'm like, I'm done reading right now. I, I have just under 100 pages left. I think I have like 90 pages left, two hours left in the audiobook. I was just listening to it as I went and ran a few errands. But I just found out that Selena and Rowan are Karanam, which not surprised. I could see that coming from a million miles away. But now things are starting to heat up. Like Dorian and Kale are kind of like doing something with Dorian's magic or something like that. The plot's starting to churn, which like finally I'm so excited about it. I feel like I've kind of been waiting for this. I'm just gonna listen to the audiobook, eat some breakfast, do some chores, and I'll check in when I'm done. Guys, we just found out some information. Turns out Arabin had the third word key the whole time, which is the one with the amulet, like her amulet that she lost the night her parents died. Knew that man was up to no good always. Should have known. I feel like now we're getting to the part where it's actually like the good stuff's going on with the plot, you know, and like now it's all like the good reveals are happening. Cause before I just felt like it was like, okay, yeah, I saw that coming. Yeah, I saw that coming. Like that's nothing new. But now it's like, ooh, spicy stuff is happening. Okay, they're going to see Maeve now. Basically the whole world knows that Aelin is alive or Selena's alive. The, the King of Otterlin is like pissed. He is very upset right now. But the thing is, is like he, Again, like I was just saying last night, sw he swings too evil. He just gets mad at someone and then kills like four people. And it's just like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't know, he's just not a very well fleshed out character. And I feel like just in the fact that he's supposed to be the bad guy doesn't mean that you have to kill literally every single person. I just, it's really annoying me. Another thing. <laughs> So now Selena and Rowan are going to visit Maeve to like get the answers that she wanted from the beginning of the book. And she just said, let's go visit our aunt. And I'm like, so you know you're related too. I'm so hung up on this because it feels like there's romance brewing and they know that they're related. <laughs> It's just weird. It's just weird. I do appreciate though. So we, we've gotten a few chapters of Dorian and Dorian 
like he just heard the news that Selena's alive as well and he's like so pumped and he's like we're gonna fight this world together. Dorian's just the silent man just holding back waiting for Selena to come back. I can't tell if they have now totally friend zoned each other or if there's still like a little bit of a spark there maybe with on Dorian's side. I just I really like him. I, like I feel like Rowan and Kale are just these like overpowering male dominant forces and it's fine and I, I like I especially like Rowan a lot more than I like Kale but like Dorian's just this like more subdued like calm like just he seems a lot more approachable to me and just a lot more friendly okay gonna keep reading just had to say they they know where they're related they know oh my god um I think Sorsha just died yeah she definitely died Yep, wow, that was, didn't see that one coming. Oh my. Dorian, I love him so much. Oh no, I don't want to see him go through this pain. Sweet summer child, brotherly moment. Kale just said, I love you to Dorian. We love when men show emotion. Oh no, he didn't. This king, I literally cannot. He just collared his son to become one of those beast things. His son, his literal son. Tell me how that makes sense. It doesn't. We can't have this happen to Dorian. Uh, also, is Adian gonna die? What's happening right now? Hold on, I just wanna tell you my overall thoughts on this book. This was the weakest link for me. And I feel like this book was a lot of like getting the characters where they needed to go. Like the characters had to accomplish certain things in order for the plot to keep moving forward for the future books. I don't know, I just, I, I did not enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed the other ones. Like I wish there was a little bit more romance, but at the same time, like the only romance that would have been would be between Selena and Rowan, which like irks me because they're related. <laughs> but I think that's gonna happen at some point. But I do like how a third love potential love interest was brought in. Other things, I think I really missed reading more about Dorian and Kale. Like I really liked their interactions with Selena in the first few books. I think that's why I loved the first two books so much. And that's not to say that I like don't like Rowan because I do like Rowan, but I just like, I feel like I thrived off of those first few books and I didn't get that feeling with this one. I think I'm gonna give it like a 3.75 and I normally, I normally don't like quarter rate books, but I don't know, I just feel like this was not, not my favorite one out of the whole series so far. Like Throne of Glass was by far my favorite, then Crown of Midnight, then this one. I'm really interested to see how Queen of Shadows is gonna size up to these ones because I heard it's so good. And now that she's going back to the mainland, Rifthold and stuff, to go get the word keys. I'm really interested and excited to see where that journey's gonna go. I gotta be honest with you, like I think it was very like information and plot heavy and I think I got, I listened to the audiobook for maybe 60% of this and I think I got a lot of things jumbled in my head you know like i felt like i had a hard time following the plot a lot you know all the scenes with the witches which i don't think really paid off i'm sure that's going to come down the line with future books but like it was just another added storyline on top of all the other storylines that were going on it was just like hard to keep track of everything to be honest with you but it turns out yeah those witches are on the king's side it's going to be this setup for this big war that's going to happen i'm sure in the future books like i hope we get more understanding about the king's point of view like i understand that he doesn't want magic in the land because he wants to be the most powerful and he's trying to like control everything and like have everyone submit to him and all that kind of stuff but like i don't understand his actual motives as to why he is so evil i i think it would just level up the character like level up the enjoyment of the book a lot more if i were to understand his like reasonings and like morality behind that whole like his whole decision making his whole personality i think it would really really add to the complexity of the book and like the drama of it all i'm excited for selena get to get back into her love triangle or love square now. My heart bleeds for Dorian. I love that man. He is everything to me. I just so sad that his dad is now taking him like prisoner and making him a beast thing. Someone's gotta save him. Also, I love Adian too. I like really have grown to enjoy his character and I'm really interested to see how his interactions with Selena are gonna be. I think he's just cheeky and I want to know more about him. I hope he doesn't die. I 
I'm excited for the next book. And, and I'm not like saying this was a bad book. I'm just like, I mean, when you read a series, you're inherently going to have books that are better than the other ones. And this one just didn't uphold to the first few that I read, you know? And, and that's okay. There's like no problem with that. I'm not like upset that I didn't like absolutely love this book. Um, I obviously it still moved the plot along. It still moved the characters along. I honestly don't think I have anything else to say. I'm going to give it a 3.75. I've thought about that rating for a few days and I feel like I'm very much going to stick with it. Yeah. And I guess we'll get to Queen of Shadows next. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have not seen my other two videos in this series for Crown of Midnight and for Throne of Glass and Assassin's Blade, I'm going to leave the playlist link right here for you guys to check out. Please let me know your thoughts if you have read this book as well. And if you have answers to any of my questions, I would love them in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on Air of Fire. Cannot wait to get to Queen of Shadows. I will see you in my next video. Bye!